Here you see the SQL Power XBRL Designer user interface. Unlike other taxonomy design tools, the SQL Power XBRL Designer tool is meant for use by a business end user with no knowledge of XBRL required. Here you see the creation of a concept named cache. Concepts are data elements that we need to report against. We can also take these concepts and report on them from a dimensional perspective. Here you see the industry segment by geography table, which has two dimensions, the geography dimension and its members, and the industry segment dimension and its members. We also then have a concept here, outstanding amount, as a primary item, which is reported against the various different dimensions. In order to ensure filings are accurate, we have different mechanisms to do that. Here's a simple calculation for total liabilities, which is borrowings plus deposits sums up to total liabilities. Calculations defined here are generated as XBRL calculation link bases. For more complex business rules, we can create different types of rules. We can create rules with multiple different types of operators and functions to calculate values, or we can create rules as XBRL assertions that test that value. When we create assertions, we can also create error messages that will be delivered to the users when those assertions fail. Once we've created these different metadata components, we can then create the actual return. Here we see the assets return with one very simple schedule, created by simply dragging and dropping concepts into the interface. Once we've created that return, we then publish the return. Publishing the return creates the XBRL taxonomy, including all the concepts, calculations, presentation groups, and dimensions, and makes that taxonomy and pushes it to the different elements of the system, including XBRL forms and XBRL analytics, so that taxonomy is available for use. From a filer's perspective, you log into the SQL Power XBRL Enterprise Application Suite, and you go to View Reporting Windows. Reporting windows list out what returns are available for that user to report on and when they must fill them in by. We launch XBRL forms and then the user can go into the various different schedules. Here we just have the asset schedule and we can see that I worked on this before because it stored my work in progress. If I change a value, it's going to validate that change against the XBRL taxonomy. And here you can see a field created in red triggering that rule that we showed you earlier to show that that assertion failed. In order to submit it, I need to correct that, click the Validate and Submit button, which is going to run all the business rules again before I can submit the filing. Once I've submitted the filing, I'm going to go into Reports. There's a variety of out-of-the-box reports available with XBRL Analytics, and what I'm going to do is look at a report for analyzed facts within an organization. Here I'm going to do a comparison of facts for a quarter versus previous periods. The first set of prompts allows me to select my return or taxonomy. So here I'm going to select the FDIC taxonomy. I'm going to select the specific quarter that I want the report based on. And then I'm going to run that report. That's going to bring up another set of prompts. In this set of prompts, I'm going to select the Bank of Grandin and several different facts or concepts. I could select any fact I wanted. The report is flexible from that perspective. When I run that report, in this case, I get several different data areas. Here you can see the facts listed that I selected, the value for the quarter selected, and the changes from previous periods. I also get a number of charts that I can see. So in this brief demo, you saw end-to-end -end the creation of returns, the generation of XBRL taxonomies, the use of XBRL forms to file against that taxonomy, and reporting against data filed in XBRL.